Okay, great. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you and for joining this session and we're going to discuss about a uh, very important topic, actually integrated management and uh, energy and the resources and local and production and consumption. And um, it's great pleasure actually for me to be you know, a moderator for this session and uh, joined by uh, the panel of amazing speakers, and although all of them have a great experience, hands-on experience, and going to share with us today. And let me introduce our uh, speakers for today. And, um, and first, let me start with uh, Deputy Director General and Energy Department, City of uh, uh, Odavara and uh, uh, Fuji Sawa and Taka uh, Nora. Thank you. Thank you for joining this panel. And also this we have, have the uh, Assistant Director, Energy Policy Division, Industry Department, City of uh, uh, Hama, Hamamachi, and uh, uh, Mr. Ma, uh, Matsuno Hideo. Thank you for joining. And uh, we also have a uh, Deputy Head of Energy Department, Frankfurt, Paul Fee. Welcome. And uh, also this we have uh, joined by uh, from Finland and the director of a strategic project, city of uh, Turku and Baryon Grinholm. Thank you for joining us. And uh, also this we have from two more uh, from Asian countries. And the one first is uh, Chun Yu, a senior analysis research, uh, research center for green de uh, development of Shanghai. Welcome. And also this, we have a uh, head of the environment management agency of uh, West Java province, Indonesia, Prima Maya Mayanes TS. Welcome. And uh, last but not least, a speaker we have from Kenya and uh, uh, from uh, Kisu, Kisumu County, director of uh, petroleum and energy, and electricity, sorry, the Kenya, Af Afran Odeura Oma. Welcome. Okay, great. That's uh, um, distinguished speakers. As we know, this is that today is uh, the world is, is changing, especially for cities. It's uh, becoming increasingly relevant to the climate, and the mitigation, and also adaptation, especially this COVID the pan, uh, pan, uh, pandemic crisis, and make us be rethinking just uh, how we can prepare actually for the next uh, crisis. This is uh, a, a climate crisis we're trying to mitigate impact but at the same time we have to get ourselves prepared for the impact that might uh, impact might have a, se a severe impact on cities so with that this is a, a energy uh, transition is, is coming and the cities in the driving seats in that as each of your cities have uh, been already at the front line you know, how to um, energize your city uh, citizens and how to uh, make right policies and also introduce the um, uh, local energy productions and also the technologies that they integrate in the cities can get the uh, resources uh, better utilized. So those are very unique experience probably you have that's uh, within your own context. It's a really good pleasure actually for us to and also for the audience to to hear your experience and then share to uh, with your experience to the all. Uh, to the outside world and so we can learn from each other and how we can move the energy transition uh, moving forward. Basically, we are looking at, uh, especially with the more and more renewables into the system, we can see the system is becoming more and more uh, decentralized. It's not only for actually getting renewables uh, skill up at the city level to, for the mitigation, but also actually for adaptation for long-term, this is more system become more resilient. And at the same time, this is a circular economy becoming actually more, uh, more and more a catch the attention of policymakers. And simply because if we don't do that, it's hard actually, we can keep it the economy and the growth a sustainable uh, way. And, uh, and the last is uh, for the entire society, this is we need to uh, become more decarbonized society. This is the more and more cities uh, set the goals to achieve it's a net zero and by 2050. I think uh, for uh, this Japan, this is a city, uh, this forum, and uh, it's, a, it's one of those leading and a platform and where we can share our experience. 
So it's a really great pleasure and for uh, us to have all of you. And let's um, maybe we start uh, with the, uh, hear your experience this is from each of you and the cities and uh, you have uh, uh, give us your you know, insights and I uh, also share with the experience and they give us the enlightenment and how actually and your experience can be uh, a, a successful experience, how it can be used actually for the other uh, cities. So with that, uh, let me start with the um, um, city of uh, Odavaro. Yes, uh, Mr. and uh, Taka Nora, and uh, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. This is Fujisawa. I'm the Deputy Director General of Environmental Department of City of Odawara. This is the outline of Odawara City. Odawara has a population of 190,000 people and 80 kilometers from Tokyo. And using the bullet train, it takes only 30 minutes to get to Odawara from Tokyo. But it has a forest, the countryside, rivers, and the sea within a relatively short area, a small area. And it is rich in nature. In harmony with nature, we have a livelihood and culture thriving. With regard to the vision of Odawara City for energy, is, is that uh, we would like to become a sustainable city utilizing local renewable energy. So we would like to pursue the theme of creating the community which is sustainable. So the turning point for us was the 3-11-2011, which was the Great East Japan earthquake. So that was the turning point for us. We had a deep discussions around how to create a sustainable city, and we decided we need to introduce undepleted uh, renewable energy uh, into the uh, society as an essential part of the community infrastructure. And in November 2019, for decarbonization, uh, we uh, declared that we are going to achieve the net zero emission of carbon in 2050. That was in November 2019. We were the seventh city to make such a declaration. How we can effectively use the renewable energy within the community is very much relevant to the distributed, decentralized energy system establishment. So we have been working on that. So as for the past 10 years, this is the flow of the events. So we created the local production of the energy. And then uh, we created the system to distribute, uh, deliver the energy. So we created the companies and the mechanism necessary for the city to do that. With regard to the establishment of the local entities for local energy, we discussed with various stakeholders, such as citizens, regional financial institutions, and chamber of commerce and energy company. And we created a local uh, uh, energy company uh, through the local company's equity participation. And we also uh, saw the mega solar business implemented with community fund method. And then in Odawara City, the Shonan Power Company Limited started operating using the existing gas sales route, we created a consortium and delivered the locally produced energy to the citizens. So it's a local production of the renewable energy and the consumption of the renewable energy within the community. So as we embarked upon these initiatives as a city, in order to encourage the engagement of the stakeholders, we acted as a secretariat. We also introduced the incentives uh, to develop uh, the renewable energy through the citizens' equity participation. And also, the Shonan Power Company Limited donate, uh, invested some of their profit to the children's cafeteria in order to contribute to the achievement of SDGs related to the community. So this is uh, the 
use of the uh, EV uh, to create the community energy management. EVs are used for both car sharing and as, as a storage batteries. So we produce energy at ho locally and consume locally and also store locally. And this initiative was done in collaboration with the company called Lexiv, which is a startup company with the know-how of energy business. It's, and so this company in Shonan Power and the city are working together. Using EVs as a car sharing means, we would like to electrify the vehicles as much as possible and also like to optimize the number of units. Under the normal times, when uh, it is parked through the remote control, uh, we can uh, conduct a peak cut of the electricity demand of the buildings where a charging station is installed. Uh, and so it is used as a coordination purpose. And also under the disaster uh, situation, it could be used as an emergency energy supply. And uh, so EV is used as a mobile storage battery, and car sharing utilizing EVs are combined as a project. So it's a combination of energy and local transportation. And it is a uh, infrastructure initiatives that we are taking. And so it is a very significant initiative as we use the renewable energy to improve the quality of life with substance. So we have a, a private and public partnership in this EV project, and we also work with the external uh, company with technology. And the city is engaged in four points. One is to set the policy and provide the demonstration field, and we communicate the outcome of the project. And we also uh, provide a venue to connect uh, local players as well as external players and financial institutions. In order to develop a decarbonized society, we need to have a business model. Uh, for that uh, purpose, we have a private and public partnership. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing this experience. Very interesting because the EVs and, and local and uh, renewables Perfect secular coupling, you know, models actually this is being used and also successfully um, deployed worldwide. And uh, we can we go come back to you and then we'll have the discussion about the business model established. And our next speaker, let me invite uh, Mr. Uh, Mazunsuru Hidio and from uh, Hamamotsi City. Not hear you. I'm sorry about it. Do you hear me now? I'm Matsuno from Energy Policy Division of the Industrial Department, City of Hamamatsu. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Let me start. I have limited time, so let me just go through this very quickly to give you an overview. This is the outline of the city. Hamamatsu is between Osaka and Tokyo. We are in the west part of Shizuoka city. We have 1,558 square kilometers as a land area. We are the second largest city in Japan. Next, please. We are a city of manufacturing. So there are so many manufacturers located in our city. Next, please. Back in 2011, when there was the Great East Japan earthquake, prior to that, well, uh, following that, our city is now leading this initiative by setting up a headquarters dedicated for the next generation uh, policies. Now, Hamamatsu City created our energy vision to create a resilient, low-carbon city with secure energy. We call it Energy Smart City. We have four major pillars, which are increase the energy sufficiency rate, realize low-carbon society by promoting energy conservation, and optimization of energy use by promoting being smart 
and revitalize local economy by creating environment and energy business. Sorry, this is a bit uh, busy chart, but to the right, I have an illustration to show you this vision. This creates a smart city. Our target is as follows. We set a certain numerical energy self-sufficiency rate by FY2030, by combining renewables and non-utility generation facilities, we want to achieve 30.6% of self-sufficiency. This is our current status of renewable energies that's installed. We are number one in Japan in terms of the installed capacity that was led by solar power installation. Combining solar power and wind, we were made number one. In terms of solar power alone, we are also number one in Japan. This is an illustrative, a conceptual illustration here. We have wind and solar. And as I said, since we have a large land area and we have many forests, and this is a miniature of the Japanese landscape. So we will make the best use of that. So against our set target of 30.6% by FY2030, as of 2019, we've achieved 16%. In reality, we already have large and small scale hydropower. So our self-sufficiency rate now stands at 61.6%. Next, please. So against that backdrop, Hamamatsu City made a declaration of RE100. We aim for zero CO2 emission by 2050. Hamamatsu City RE100 means it's not just about energies within the city, but we want to produce more renewable uh, originated energy equal to or greater than the total volume of energy use. Next, please. This is more details about installed capacity, energy consumption, and self-sufficiency rate of renewables. Next, please. Power generated within the city shall be used in this way. This is the first airport by a municipality in Japan. We established a first local PPS financed by a local government. We work with a punish uh, power generator as well as waste incineration facility to use electri electricity uh, created by the, them. Hamamatsu Energy Core supports local energy production and consumption. This is a new initiative. Next, please. On the other hand, by using such initiatives in the field, our city set up a promotion council attended by 190 entities. We want to go through phases to implement all these ideas. And lastly, we use these public facilities to create and execute microgrid project projects. We work with Sea Energy and Hamamatsu Energy Core. Just like other cities, we work with many organizations and utilities together with citizens as we promote our energy policies. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Very impressive. Very impressive. Number one in solar and also the, together with wind as well. That's a very impressive achievement. And also the very great you know, vision, grand vision. You can see this is an energy export to the other um, neighboring uh, cities and also regions. It's very interesting. I would like to hear a little bit more actually about uh, how actually the partnership works in that context. And but uh, we um, next uh, speaker I would like to invite from uh, uh, Frankfurt, Paul Fay, and uh, uh, he's going to give us a little bit talk about heating. It's interesting. And the Frankfurt is a is a big city. <laughs> yeah. So I would like a very interesting to hear your experience. And uh, Mr. Fay, the please the floor is yours. Yes, uh, thank you very much uh, for the uh, in introduction. Um, 
and it was very impressive to see the figures from Hamamatsu, which are producing quite a lot of uh, their renewable energy by uh, themselves. Unfortunately, I, I can't see my slides. Have you already um, opened them? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I will focus on the, on the heating sector uh, because um, there are a lot of projects we are running, but uh, this decarbonizing of the heating sector is really a, a, a local job which has to be done. Uh, the uh, decarbonizing of the electricity sector will not just happen on the local side, but will happen uh, internationally and also in the rest of, uh, of Germany. And next slide, please. You see a uh, slide of, of Frankfurt. This is the site of our skyscrapers and of our town hall. Frankfurt is a city of approximately 750,000 people and growing by 2% every year. Compared to a lot of Asian cities, Frankfurt's quite small. But um, as we learned uh, in our experience exchange, we had together with Yokohama, a lot of uh, things we do have in common and our approach uh, are somehow um, uh, comparable. Uh, what we want to achieve is to, uh, we want to reduce our energy demand by 50% from 2010 to 2050. And then our hope is that we can produce half of it uh, in Frankfurt renewables and the rest we will get from the region. This will may be not be possible to uh, new developments of the data centers in Frankfurt. Uh, you, as you probably know, Frankfurt uh, is uh, one of the uh, data center capitals in uh, Europe. And the electricity demand of data centers was back in 2020, 1.6 uh, terawatt hours electricity which is 20% uh, of the whole demand of the city, including the industrial sector. And uh, it is foreseen that this demand uh, will increase to 3.5 uh, terawatt hours in 2030. Um, so this is electricity we uh, just cannot produce on site, uh, renewable, uh, we have to import it. And therefore I think the 25% uh, share producing renewables uh, in Frankfurt will not be uh, possible. But uh, we have um, also the opportunity to use the excess heat from the uh, data centers, and this will probably solve uh, part of our problems. We have to uh, so, uh, supply the heating for the, sec for the uh, Frankfurt uh, households and the uh, commerce and uh, uh, office sector. Please, next slide. Here you can see um, the uh, development of carbon dioxide emissions emitted by the city of Frankfurt. The goal is to uh, nearly reduce them to zero in 2050. And when you look at uh, 22, we only reached 20% uh, of CO2 reduction. And when you see uh, the trend analysis, uh, if we go on like this, we won't achieve these goals. We have to increase uh, in, uh, tremendously our efforts uh, to slow down uh, carbon dioxide emission. Next slide, please. There you can see uh, just a glance to the uh, heating sector, households and offices. They perform, per performed quite well. Uh, the reducement was uh, nearly 20% in 2010, but from 10, 2010, you see it slightly increasing. Um, also increasing are the number of inhabitants and the jobs. Uh, 400,000 commuters come to Frankfurt every day, so that on daytime we have a population of approximately 1.1 million people, in nighttime uh, remaining 750. Next slide, please. There you can see that our uh, heating sector in the moment uh, depends on uh, fossil fuels. Uh, the figures is without the industrial sector, which we have excluded in our, uh, in our studies. The projection in 2050 is that we have to reduce our energy demand by 53%. Uh, 
and we will mainly use uh, district heating for supplying the heat uh, to the buildings of the city and this district heating uh, will come from our municipal waste because we have a we have still an a steam uh, district heating system in the center of the city and we, the rest of this we will cover with excess heat and we have a river where we can get uh, this heat out of but still remaining there's a demand for peak load which cannot be covered by renewable sources therefore we, we need uh, either natural gas or hydro uh, uh, or um, <clears throat> or h2 uh, to support it we will see if uh, this um, hydrogen will be uh, possible to use uh, in the heating sector in the future. And next slide, please. There you can see uh, we uh, did a calculation in a European project, which was and have been supported by the Technical University of Vienna. And this shows uh, that the um, energy transition in the heating sector is possible in Frankfurt. In the moment, we pay uh, approximately 440 million euro per year for the energy. And when you look at the figures, figures on the left side, there are shown three scenarios. Each scenario uh, is different and the more it costs, the less CO2 uh, we are emitting. So you can see uh, when CO2 prices uh, on fossil fuels rise up to 150 euro per ton, then these scenarios are from the cost side equivalent to the actual uh, energy costs we have in Frankfurt. Uh, next slide, please. So it seems that the mission is uh, possible to decarbonize the heating sector in Frankfurt. And now I come to the conclusions. Next slide, please. I think every city can make its own plan for zero carbon. Uh, we used a European project which developed an, an online tool called Hotmaps, which is available just for European cities in the moment, but this could also be probably used uh, in your country uh, with the same algorithms. And this is an open source tool, so I can invite you to join this tool. And um, there's enough uh, renewable and excess heat sources uh, uh, for cover the heat demand, but individual to each city, you have to find your own. But what is very crucial is uh, to cut down uh, the heat demand. And the problem remaining is um, the high temperature energy demand of our steam network and of industry. And of course, uh, peak load in winter. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, kind attention. There you can see an uh, image of our uh, power plant, which we hope we will soon be able to shut down. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fay. This is for the very interesting and the case that you presented to us about the heating. The heating is a, is a big topic and is, is a really big, you know, uh, emitter for the uh, carbon dioxide globally and uh, that's how we can address that is going to be critical like uh, to whether or not we can achieve the 2050 target and uh, i think it's a very interesting case from frankfurt is to use the uh, uh, waste heat in from either from industry or from the c2p and also from a data center as you just mentioned actually from the and uh, uh, you can build actual local and uh new echo you know Echo grid, for example, this is a this is a new like the version of uh, heating. So very interesting. Where well, I can come back to you and uh, on that, and well, very interesting actually to hear your thought about because you said they have seven hundred thousand acre residents in Frankfurt, but uh, uh, daily. So there's the four hundred thousand and uh, people actually commuters. So the yes. problem this were very interesting to to see how you can address this you know this uh, uh, transport and. Uh, <laughs> How did you carbonize <laughs> that one? But well, we can discuss about that later on. But now let me to uh, invite the next speaker and from also from Europe, Finland, and from an even colder and <laughs> region. And uh, so let me uh, invite uh, Mr. Uh, Granholm and to give us a talk about how actually your city and addressing and uh, the climate change and also to become carbon neutral. Uh, floor is yours, sir.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here in, the, in this panel and, and, and uh, share our experiences. And greetings from, from Turku, southwest Finland. We used to be the former capital of Finland. Uh, nowadays, we are perhaps the carbon neutral capital of, of Finland. And, and um, today we have a bright weather and even a little bit snowfall. So you are totally correct with the weather temperature. And, and, um, and for us, it's really interesting to be sharing and listening to these experiences. But could I have the next slide, please? So uh, our story here is that we are, we are as, as well, City of Turku is celebrating our 800 years uh, anniversary in, in 2029. And for, for that and for, for all other reasons, we want to be a modern, we want to be an interesting and attractive city. And, and we have two overall big goals. One is to be, uh, be carbon neutral by 2029. Uh, we want to be the oldest carbon neutral city globally. And, and then to be resource wise by, by 2040. And uh, part of this story is to have these ambitious goals. And we are really happy that we have our politicians fully supporting. So we have all um, parties, uh, political parties supporting our strategy. And with these two, well, ambitions for some people think it's over ambitious goals. It is really the, well, our, our interest is to to get curiosity and interest by citizens, by companies, by, uh, by people in, in Finland and elsewhere. But could I have the next slide, please? So, yes, thank you. Um, so uh, a lot for, in our case, it has been, well, for, for our business case, has been to build up a process with clear goals, uh, uh, to see what, where we have the needs. We know exactly, more or less, where we have our, our emissions. We know that our district heating has had the biggest emissions, uh, up to 42%. We have the uh, transport road traffic on 19%, then electricity at 13 and then we have coming down to, uh, well, waste management and agriculture, 1-2% disease and so on. So we know exactly, let's say, the game plan and, and, and where we have put in our efforts in order to, to, reach, to reach the goals. Um, really important element for us has been, as a, as a small city uh, or, or in, in Europe, a mid-city has to be to benchmark and evaluate our own activities. And this is a, well, time and resource efficiency issue. So um, we are not inventing the wheel ourselves. We are benchmarking ourselves in different sectors with different goals continuously. So doing, doing uh, comparisons in, in, with, with um, uh, platforms like government of mayors or CDP or, or so on has been really instrumental for us in order to, to find the, the, the ways to proceed. Next slide, please. So um, for us, as I mentioned, the, the, B, the clear business plan has been the case. So for, for us to become carbon neutral, uh, by 2029, we need to have a clear goal. We need to know exactly sector by sector how to go on. And, and we have the baseline in 1990. We had by 2020 a reduction of 48%. We know the next steps. We also know the challenges for the upcoming years. And we know that the biggest challenge will be in, in, in transport and mobility. And um, we also know more or less exactly what kind of actions we need to take in order to, to reach the goal. Next slide, please. So when it comes to our carbon uh, and, and uh, uh, cli climate and carbon neutrality things, so we are we have a uh, very broad, well, say split or, or mix of, 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 of sources of energy production from water, wind, solar to multi-level power plants and, and two-way heat systems. And, and these, uh, we have 48 different cases of, of, of actions to, to, to go and, and reach. When it comes to uh, sustainable mobility, we have a reduction on greenhouse gases on 50% on, on total, and then to be carbon neutral in public transport by 2029. Also important uh, in, 
issue for us is the urban structure. So we try to be condense, uh, efficient, and find well efficiency in 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 in, in the city structure also. Well, coming from Finland, we also uh, have a lot of forests, and and so therefore the carbon sinks for us are really important. And 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 then last but not the least, uh, the adaptation and resilience, so preparing for climate risks, and for us the Sendai Convention framework has been really important on disaster risk reduction, and this is something we are we are evaluating to, together with other cities in the EU. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you. So um, for us, um, as, a, as a small city, so we have to take voluntary actions. And we have a tradition to, to take, well, make in, initiatives. We are the first city in, in Finland who had an environmental unit, have an environmental board. And, and since then we have been going into well recycling actions first in Finland and so on. And now we are very much talking about the circular economy as well. So my lot, if I could have the next slide, please. So um, one, let's say one, perhaps one example of a circular economy case is in our um, regional water system, both for drinking water and for wastewater. And this case is for for the, for the wastewater side where we have nine municipalities joined together with, with city of Turku, we have our wastewater treatment in the middle of the city under the bedrock of our former prison, but now nowadays hotels, well, luxury hotel, where we have a, a stable 365 day uh, uh, system or all, all conditions are the same. And, and this wastewater treatment plant is, is actually accumulated 14 times more energy than it is consumed. Usually the wastewater is, is extremely energy consuming for us, but for us it's a 14 times more on the plus side. In addition, we get well, heating for more than 90,000 apartments in, in, in the city of Turku. We get electricity. Uh, we also get biogas for our heavy vehicles and uh, humus and green area materials and so on. And of course, nutrients away from the wastewater, which is really important for our Baltic Sea. So this is, well, one of the jewels we have. But please, next slide on, oh, going over. So next, uh, in 2029, we will be the oldest, uh, hopefully boldest, 800-year-old uh, carbon neutral city. and and. Well, all is one thing, but we have 800 years of experience. I'm happy to share them with you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interesting case and uh, from Finland and uh, especially, you know, ambitious target 2029. And you can get this is, if I recall correctly, probably this is the second after uh, um, Copenhagen that's going to, to achieve the carbon neutral. Yeah, it's great. And uh, okay, next speaker, and we are running a little bit behind schedule. Let's uh, try to and uh, stay uh, stick with the, the time we have. The next speaker, I'll invite uh, um, Chun Yu, and from Shanghai, and uh, it's a major city. And uh, let's uh, see how they are going to tackle the carbon and energy issues. The floor is yours, Chun Yu. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a great pleasure being here. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the initiatives that Shanghai has been taking to encourage the use of its renewables. First, I would like to give you a brief introduction of the city. Shanghai is located in the east coast of China, and it's one of the largest city, cities in China in terms of population and the size of economy. The city's demand for energy or electricity is very huge. However, there is a large gap between Shanghai and other major provinces, especially in central or western China, in terms of resources, including, uh, including renew re renewables. So in Shanghai right now, we get about a half of our electricity imported from other provinces, barely about 4% of the city's total electricity consumption comes from renewable energy that is produced locally. 
despite this challenge, we are striving to use clean energy and uh, become more energy efficient. We are shifting to use natural gas since it's cleaner than other fossil fuels. Also, we are supporting the local production of renewable energy, giving priority to the development of distributed solar uh, photovoltaics and offshore wind and coming forward with policy targets and measures that are needed to accelerate the energy transition. So for the policy target, um, we just draft the uh, outline of the 14th five-year plan for the city. We are aiming to peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2025, five years ahead of the country's timeline. By 2025, the use of natural gas will be raised to 17% and the use of local renewable energy will be increased to 8% of the city's total electricity consumption. So let me talk about some of our uh, key policy actions and initiatives that are helping make this happen. First, we have the uh, local subsidies for renewable energy projects through 2021. Solar and offshore wind project projects will be able to receive uh, um, a maximum subsidy from the city government of 15 million yuan. Uh, the government will offer six months extensions to solar projects delayed by the pandemic. Uh, so if a project starts construction by the end of 2019 or 2020, it has until June the following year to connect to the grid and uh, get the prior year's subsidy rate. Uh, we also have supporting policies for local, medium, small and micro PV enterprises. Uh, in 2015, Shanghai launched a business loan program for SMEs to support the development of distributed PVs. Uh, the uh, Shanghai Administration Center of Policy Financing Guarantee Funds for SMEs coordinates a relevant financial institutions or banks in Shanghai and provide financing guarantee services to enhance credit for SME enterprises and ease their financing challenges. Uh, and we are investing in research and development in renewable energy and supporting innovations. Uh, Shanghai is rapidly developing its clean energy technologies in areas such as energy storage, battery technology, offshore wind, uh, hydrogen, and energy internet to improve the performance and uh, stability of renewable energy and reduce the cost of production. We also have a green fund uh, targeting on green technology innovation established in 2017. Uh, the uh, fund is set up to 3.5 billion yuan to attract companies or uh, organizations to develop new solutions for decarbonization uh, to support the implementation of green projects and to speed up technology transfer. Just finished by talking about our demonstration projects, we are developing uh, solar PV plus projects, for example, solar PV plus fisheries that enable PV um, power generation on the up floor and uh, aquaculture on the lower. Uh, in addition, a number of demonstration projects of distributed solar PVs have been constructed, um, uh, including the city's first near zero carbon emission building with its rooftop uh, covered by solar PV systems, we are interested in further developing and scaling up demonstration or a pi a pilot projects. For example, we are seeking uh, a shift from individual green buildings to sustainable communities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very impressive. And this is, you can see the long list and has been achieved. And also the Shanghai is a, is a sort of leading in the cities and in China, especially in the context of the you know, Chinese government uh, set a pledge to achieve 2060 carbon neutrality. That's where we're hoping that the Shanghai is continue the showcase and for the rest of China. And, uh, and we will hear more and we'll discuss about the experience from Shanghai. And the um, next speaker would like to invite uh, um, 
uh, from Indonesia and uh, West uh, Java province. The, the, the largest economy in ASEAN, this country. So this is uh, we'll next let's uh, um, to hear from uh, Ms. Uh, Ma Ma Mayan Nino Tias and to hear about uh, you know your experience. Sorry, apologize for the pronunciation of your name. It's uh, I would like to share uh, my video. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice to be here. Related to our topic today, integrated management of regional energy resources. I would like to talk about the renewable energy specifically in West Java province, Indonesia. Basically here in West Java, we already have local low carbon development policy, local government renewable energy plans and climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts, which we will discuss with the together. Okay, uh, before we talk uh, about local government renewable energy, uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, energy plan and climate change mitigation, we need to know first the illustration of West Java, the current condition, as well as uh, there is a big problem. Yeah, in West Java, saving, uh, uh, facing several problems that affect the environment, such as unmanaged solid waste, open dumping landfill, and high uh, uh, traffic uh, jam. And uh, in this uh, slide, so uh, to solve the problem, West Java has made commitment of global and national uh, low carbon. Here is this the commitment of uh, uh, chronologies. Starting from 2001, eh, sorry, 2012, uh, the president uh, regulation about reduction in uh, greenhouse gas emission was uh, determined and its uh, target was included to the national development plan in 2014. Later, the conference of parties regarding climate change agreement and low carbon development initiative were also included to the uh, National Development Plan in 2018. And finally, West Java commitment was established along with six other provinces in the MOU low carbon development planning. Yeah. Uh, on focusing in West Java, the West Java Environmental Agency has met the degree of the governor regarding climate change, mitigation, and adaptation since to uh, 2010 until now, we have, uh, have a West Java regional regulation about environmental management and compliance with the environmental law. And then uh, we make the action plan to reduce the emission uh, gas. And then uh, we uh, have uh, developing uh, internal internalization in a uh, regional development plan. And until now, we develop plannings uh, with the, so many initiatives. This is the, our commitment for uh, low uh, carbon uh, development. And here you can see the mechanism low carbon development initiative of Indonesia. I think it's because we don't have uh, any time. So uh, I will to show you briefly, focusing on reducing the greenhouse gas emission with three aspects, namely economic growth, the reduction and the greenhouse gas emission reduction. I think this is an important slide to show you that the regional action plans of West Java greenhouses gas emission. Currently, we have five sectors, uh, namely forestry, agriculture, energy, transportation, and waste and domestic waste. Those sectors are open for development collaboration. Those sectors are equal to 13.5 million tons of CO2 equivalent emission reduction and so 9.94% 9 uh, of business and usual basically projection in 2030. Okay, uh, we have already uh, also uh, integrated data with the national uh, to the local level because it is not only the integrated with the action plan that has been stipulated by the West Java government and local level, but also with the 
activities such as uh, NGO communities, which are submitted to the application for with uh, sign mark application. This application can be accessed by all the go local government and uh, provincial level. Okay. Okay, now we are moving, moving on the renewable energy plants in uh, West Java. The infrastructure, five sectors that I mentioned have been uh, are spread all around the West Java and can be seen in this map. Okay, this is the activities uh, in West Java that we have refused, uh, derived fuel. They produce R uh, RDF in Bulut Nambu Regional Solid Waste Management, in uh, and also plan to develop another with another uh, area. There is a uh, we have uh, we have managed the solid waste uh, to produce uh, RDF, and then also in uh, we develop in TPPAS Logok Nangka is plan a waste to energy development using thermal technology to produce electricity. Revenue is obtained from the sale of electricity to PLN and type increase uh, from uh, the district and city. The capacity of TPPAS Legok Nangka uh, is uh, 1,820 ton per day. And also, this is the uh, LRT of Bandung Raya is planned to be a, a public transportation to serve Bandung metropolitan area, consists of uh, seven roads and will continue to be developed. And also, solar energy rooftop is developed as a new renewable energy, which is planned to be installed at government buildings, schools, sports, building, and health uh, facilities. Okay, okay, we develop also a non IPP solar power plant uh, PLTS map. There are 182 PLTS non IPP located in uh, district and city and uh, West Java province, and also the IPP solar power, power plant. We have uh, the uh, 11 PLTS uh, IPP located in Bogor, Bekasi, Karawang, Purwakarta, and Cirebon. And I would uh, like to inform you that uh, we have also the, uh, developed the first floating solar power plant in Indonesia, located in Cirata, West Java province, with the capacity 145 megawatts with the area of 200 uh, hectare. And this slide show an alternative energy from animal husbandry sector. We have to utilize so many coal to produce uh, biogas. And there are uh, 65, sorry, yeah. 65 about uh, micro hydro power uh, plants also we develop in West Java province. Uh, the slide so next about the climate change adaptation and mitigation efforts at the community level. Uh, we develop climate village program, namely that is a national program developed by the Minister of Environment and Forestry of the Republic of Indonesia to encourage activate, activate uh, party participation of the community and all parties is implementing local action to increase resilience to the impacts of climate change and reduction of uh, uh, GHG emission. And the last slide, I'd like to uh, show you that we have cooperate with industry, namely with uh, industrial corporate social responsibility, responsibility in the form of partnership between government, society, private sectors, media, influencers, and academics, uh, we call pentahelic strategy in the context of the voting of climate pillage from the private sector is industrial GSR activities. Okay, I think that is my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for very uh, interesting, and especially from the regional perspective. And, and also, this, uh, I'm very glad I actually touched upon the social an aspect and how actually the locals can benefit and from the local production of renewables and, and the resource uh, uh, and also as well as uh, uh, resilience, climate resilience. That is a very important, especially for, I think, for Jakarta and, uh, you know, this is for uh, Indonesia in, in general. So this is a very interesting perspective and uh, we can, we're very here, uh, glad to hear more about that when we discuss it. So when, let me uh, invite our uh, lots of speaker and uh, from another continent, from Africa. And uh, thank you very much for your patience first and the will overrun. And uh, um, Mr. Uma, yes, uh, please, the floor is yours. And, uh, 
we can now hear it. Yep, go ahead. Yep, uh, good, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from wherever you are. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, to share with you uh, our pre experience and contribution to uh, mitigating climate change effects. I'll uh, go straight to my slides. If it can be shared, please. Yeah, go ahead. I think slices are up there already. Uh, unfortunately, I can't see them. I saw the screen from Secretariat too, and I can only see Yong Shen on my screen. Uh, may, might be because uh, of the view. You we said. can see your slides. Yeah, we, we can you see your slides. Can you just go ahead? You can, you, you, you can see them? Yeah. Okay, unfortunately I can see then I'll use so on my end. Eh? Mm -hmm. um, next slide, uh, about Kisumu County. Uh, are you there? All right, uh, Kisumu County is one of the 47 uh, devolved units uh, of government that uh, came into place when Kenya enacted uh, uh, its 2010 constitution. Uh, regionally, Kisumu County is in the western part of uh, Kenya. Uh, in a jurisdiction which was formerly a district in the Nyanza province. Uh, Kisumu County is headquartered uh, at the lake shores in Kisumu City, which is at the shores of Lake Victoria. And um, uh, the county has a population of about 1.1 million residents and uh, its land area is uh, 22,085.9 kilometers square. Next slide, please. Uh, then on about uh, our efforts in promoting uh, renewable energy, as a, as a county and as a county government, we've made the tremendous uh, uh, efforts uh, in um, promoting adoption of renewable energy uh, technologies. One of them is uh, implementation of the towards 100% uh, renewable energy in cities and regions, a project that we are undertaking in collaboration with uh, Iclay Africa. And on this, we have a target of uh, transitioning to 100% IRE by the year uh, 2050. And in this project, we've uh, achieved some milestones. Uh, the project has undertaken um, a national energy situation analysis whose report is out and uh, Kisumu County Energy Status Report, a report which is also out. Then the project will be moving to the next stage of uh, uh, doing capacity building among the, within the county, among the county staff, and also we'll be moving in the next stage of uh, identification of uh, bankable, bankable projects. And also it will also be supporting um, development of the county uh, energy plan. Next slide. Hello. Yeah, you're back. Uh, you're muted, yeah, please. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. Um, next slide, that is a, uh, On uh, effort number two, that is implementation of solar mini grids, uh, micro grids, and uh, solar street lights in uh, our health facilities, market centers, and uh, public utility areas. Uh, the county, in this effort, uh, has installed a uh, solar water heating system in uh, public hospitals, 
and uh, also solar uh, powered street lighting in uh, uh, some of our market centers and even within uh, Kisumu, Kisumu city. And our plan is to install more mini grids uh, in public utility areas and uh, public institutions. Initially, we are targeting about, uh, we are targeting 19 uh, key hospitals to go full solar and to be totally run on uh, renewable energy. And we plan to do this by the year uh, 2023. Next slide, please. Uh, we have uh, converted our most of our so, uh, water supply systems to be solar driven. That is, we are converting from uh, the conventional um, grid connected uh, water supply system to solar to solarization of the of the system. In this front, about over fifty water supply boreholes have been drilled and uh, equipped uh, with the solar pumping uh, uh, system. Uh, going forward, we'd want to uh, power all our water treatment uh, plants and the water distribution uh, system to be fully solar powered. Next slide, please. Uh, we, we've also, at the community level, we, we really want uh, our communities uh, to embrace renewable energy and uh, convert from the uh, conventional non-renewable uh, technologies to, for their lighting purposes. And we started a project uh, DAB, Operation Nyangile Out. Nyangile basically is a paraffin lanterns and tin lamps which is a, a common place in our rural uh, setups and the vulnerable groups. So in this so far, the county has distributed about 1,512 uh, solar home kits. Uh, the intention of this drive is actually to sensitize our uh, rural communities and the county residents to switch from uh, paraffin to to solar for their lighting purposes. In the Kenya Population and Housing Census report of 2019, uh, we have about uh, 52 households using grid electricity for their lighting, 26.2% using uh, uh, solar, and about 17.7% uh, uh, using uh, uh, tin lamps or the paraffin lamps. So our intention is to convert this 17.7% to, uh, to solar lighting. Next slide, please. Uh, we are also in the cooking area. We are making efforts to ensure that uh, our households within the county and within, within Kisumu City adopt sustainable energy technologies for cooking. So we started a drive that is promotion of clean cooking solutions in various events, uh, partnering with the uh, Clean Cooking Association of Kenya and uh, Practical Action East Africa. Uh, in this front, uh, Kisumu County has actually uh, distributed uh, uh, clean cooking stoves which are using uh, ethanol. Kisumu County, again, I must mention, is blessed with the, uh, we have uh, three distilleries, so ethanol production is done uh, locally, uh, and we would want uh, our populations to adopt uh, uh, ethanol-powered uh, uh, cooking stoves as a way of creating a market for, for the ethanol that is produced within the county. Next slide, please. Um, we've realized that for us to push our population and even partners to adopt uh, renewable energy technologies, we have to have the right uh, policies in the legal framework, which will guide everyone in adoption of uh, the, the renewable energy technologies. Uh, Kenya as a nation enacted the Energy Act of 2019, which led to the formation of a renewable Rural Electrification and Renewable Energy Corporation. 
this strengthens the aspect of renewable energy uh, and uh, creating a corporation that will drive uh, adoption and implementation of renewable energy projects across the country. Uh, so Kisumu County is uh, partnering with this uh, corporation to drive renewable energy adoption within the county. Uh, we also have a county climate change policy and act 2020. Uh, we also have uh, a draft county sustainable energy policy, which is still under development and we are looking forward that at the end of the, this year, uh, 2021, uh, this uh, policy shall become an act. Uh, we also have a county energy plan, which is under, still under development stage, which will uh, guide implementation and adoption of renewable energy technologies across the country. Next slide, please. I think the last slide is going to be right. Can you um, please speed I'm, I'm up a little bit? Yeah. All right, all right. Um, I'm, almost, I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, we, we, we intend, it's, it's already under development, establishment of a bioenergy center where we'll be promoting uh, uh, research and the demonstration of renewable energy technologies to spur adoption of the same amongst the community members. So this center will do capacity building and training, research and development for local solutions, and demonstration and exhibition of RREs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you very much for the very interesting and um, sharing your case. And apologize for you know, pushing and uh, rushing uh, through. Uh, and um, well, I've given another 10 minutes, actually, and uh, from the organizer. So we have uh, 12 minutes for discussion currently. And uh, I would like to, actually, a very interesting panel. This is uh, sharing the experience from you know the cities across the world, and uh, each city is very different. And But one of the... Um, thing I was, as we just mentioned, this is from the city and also the rural areas and also other um, neighboring and uh, uh, regions. I just wonder how actually you, when you develop, you know, when you're considering local production and also promoting, you know, the uh, con uh, consumption and the versus, you know, collaborating with the other uh, regions and especially from rural areas, how can share the benefits and again from this is the, the new dynamics so i just uh, wonder if you can share with us a little bit uh, experience let me start with uh, and uh, city uh, hamamuchi and uh, because you just mentioned i think you're uh, focusing also on exporting the energy this is uh, trying to be uh, energy positive and so um, region can, can you share with us your experience uh, mr uh, he do. Well, uh, Mama, uh, Mama, Mama. Hi. Hi. Yes. As I said, Hamamatsu City is like a miniature of Japan. We have varied landscape from mountains and city areas, and at the hilly and mountainous areas, they face various transportation challenges. So we can focus on energy and use forest resources and flown out wood trunks flown from mountains, using it for micro biomass energy production. There are 16 organizations, NPOs, uh, combined. There are a total of 16 organizations working for that. They are working for resource circulation as well as job creation and virtuous cycle of local economy and its development with the focus on renewables. And from that, uh, we get heat to use to supply to others. So my point is, we want to use renewables that are best suited for local needs. It is only natural. Even in a small city, such things are possible so that we can achieve sustainable and circular economy. Thank you. Very interesting and enlightening. And also the similar question I'll get to uh, Frankfurt and Mr. Uh, Faye. 
And as you mentioned, you know, there are still uh, commuters, and also this is from uh, electricity and and also for the for the heating as well. And I, I this is very this is the, also the linking to the uh, you know the Frankfurt and its neighboring as well. Actually, in Germany, it will interesting case is uh, as the interface in terms of heating and, and energy services compared to and the electricity and the taxation is a little different. So I don't I just wonder how actually you address this kind of uh, if you're local and uh, local production and consumption we are generally electricity you will use electric electrons you would like to turn into the heat. This is another uh, sort of question unique to Germany, but probably for the other countries could be benefit from uh, your experience as well. Well, ho hopefully I, I understood your, your, your question right. You, oh. You've been talking about our com com commuters coming to Frankfurt yeah. every day, 400,000, and uh, local production of electricity. Yes. Um, to uh, to be frank, uh, we have the same share like uh, Shanghai. We have four percent of the electricity in the moment produced renewable in the city, and I think due to a lack of space, uh, we, uh, we 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 it's it's very hard to increase it because we can only use the roofs of our buildings, and this is dependent how old the building is and how much a roof can carry. And also we have an environmental department which wants to green all the roofs. And therefore there is a, a, there's a competition. What, what, what shall we put on it? Uh, solar power or, 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 or trees or whatever. This is um, something we have to solve, of course. And the problem of the commuters uh, coming to Frankfurt is we, we do have uh, quite a good public transporting system, but it is uh, Normally, it's not uh, designed for the peak load of the uh, commuters. And another problem is that they, of course, uh, come into Frankfurt with cars. We have a lot of parking space. We should reduce the parking space, that's what we know. But uh, we cannot do it just once. We have to do it uh, time after time. And um, we have another problem. Uh, approximately, I think it was, the figure was 1.2 person is sitting in the car. So uh, we had an, uh, an, a campaign some years ago, two persons per car uh, was its name. And uh, this would also uh, reduce the emissions in the, in the transport sector, which is what I have to say, this is the only sector of emissions which have significantly increased since 1990 and not dropped. Does this uh, fit your question yeah. a little bit? Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much and uh, for um, the, uh, the input. Uh, I, actually, another interesting thing I found out is that all the seven cities we or the region identified here are coastal uh, areas. And uh, so I was wondering actually how you see the uh, offshore winds coming to, because right now the cost dramatically and decrease along with the, the scale up uh, installations. So I just wonder how was your uh, view, how you see the uh, offshore wind and um, becoming part of the solutions to your city's energy transition. So let, let me start with the Shanghai, maybe this is the Shanghai, I think uh, uh, I forgot about 10 years ago, start with uh, um, 10 megawatt or even larger, I forgot actually the, the numbers <laughs> and with offshore wind. Shanghai, I don't know, uh, Chen Yu, are you still there? So could you maybe share with us a little bit uh, about how actually they operate, how the Shanghai, uh, you know, in, as a local, because the same as the Frankfurt is uh, the space, the land use is, 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 a, is a constraint. So how would you uh, address that? Maybe the offshore wind can offer something? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Well, uh, here in Shanghai, we are facing, um, as you said, a shortage of local energy resources, and, um, including the renewable ones. So the geographic constraints and also the uh, cost of land limit our options for renewable energies. So we do not have a fast flowing river system for hydropower. Actually, we have limited available land space for large solar or wind farms. Uh, we do have some um, uh, demonstration projects um, 
and we are um, we have the subsidies for the offshore wind, um, and uh, so um, I think. Um, but uh, it's still lacking the uh, uh, the amount um, uh, to be uh, uh, generated uh, from the wind. I think uh, it needs more uh, research and uh, uh, more like uh, investment in in terms of uh, uh, development the new uh, new technologies and uh, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, thank interesting. You. And thank you, thank you for um, your uh, input. I think we have three minutes left. I'll admit to you my, the, the last speaker and uh, to to talk about that. I would like to actually and uh, from the last uh, from a Turku, Mr. Grant Hall. Yes, so, thank you. Yeah, I, I just wonder, yeah, so you can go ahead with the offshore when you can share your insight and maybe you can end with uh, how actually if you are, you know, once you uh, achieved and the carbon neutrality or along the way that what you can, how can you share like your experience with the rest of the world? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, for us, the offshore is, is of course also an alternative, but we have a very, very big archipelago, including 1,300 islands. And we have a lot of, of uh, particular well, uh, holiday uh, resorts. So that we have a we have a kind, a kind of a, a big population against this kind of offshore investments in particular wind power mills and so on. So that is something a problem for us. But uh, so we we have to look into other alternatives and so on. But but uh, on on the other sides around the Finnish coast, there is a really strong growth now in, in wind power. For Offshore places, and so on. but but, uh, but to your second question here, um, um, I mentioned this word business business plan for us as, as a municipality or city, and, and extremely important element is this sharing. It's about well, uh, we have tried to come away from communication to dialogues, so we have um, really exten extensive dialogues. We are trying to listen to our, our inhabitants, well, citizens our companies, our universities, our students coming in, very much also to tourists, uh, either business or, or holiday tourists coming to the region to see what are the different alternatives. We know that the technologies are already in place. So it's it's a matter of, of communicating and, and having a dialogue on, on the local level and on the global level. So this Great. Is Thank really you. Important. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. And uh, very enlightening. And also this is uh, beneficial for all of us. And uh, we are running out of time. And uh, as a member, apologies for overrun the session. And but a very interesting and uh, um, session, the interesting discussion, the, all the experience you shared with us. And uh, thank you very much once again and for all your contribution to this successful uh, session. Thank you.